2004 Saw opens with two strangers waking up chained to opposite walls of an abandoned bathroom with a dead body on the floor between them. The men find cassette tapes in their pockets and use a tape recorder from the dead body to listen to the recordings. One of the men, Adam, is warned by his tape to try to survive, while the other man, Dr. Lawrence Gordon, is instructed to kill Adam by 6 o'clock or else his wife and daughter would be murdered. Adam and Gordon each have a hacksaw but quickly realize that the saws wouldn't cut through their chains and instead were intended to cut off their feet. Gordon then realizes that their captor must be none other than the infamous Jigsaw Killer. Jigsaw is a serial killer who creates elaborate and deadly traps and games to test his victim's will to survive, targeting people who he believes deserve to be punished, and often using Billy the Puppet to explain his game's rules. The only known survivor of one of Jigsaw's traps is Amanda Young, a woman who was forced to disembowel a man to retrieve a key from inside him. Months prior, detectives David Tapp and Steven Singh suspected Dr. Gordon of being the Jigsaw killer after finding evidence at a crime scene. Although Gordon was able to clear his name, Tapp remained suspicious. Eventually, Tapp and Singh tracked Jigsaw to an abandoned warehouse, but after saving a man from one of Jigsaw's traps and apprehending the killer, Jigsaw managed to escape, while Singh is killed by another trap. Back in the present, an obsessive tap has left the police force and is still convinced that Gordon is the killer. While watching Gordon's home, he witnesses a man capture Gordon's wife Allison and daughter Diana. Back inside the bathroom, Gordon receives a call from the captured Allison and tells him not to trust Adam. Adam reveals that he knows Gordon as he was hired by Tap to investigate Gordon, capturing evidence of the doctor's affairs with one of his medical students. As the clock strikes six, the Gordon family captor, a hospital orderly named Zepp, attacks Allison and Diana. The mother and daughter fight back as Detective Tap arrives to intervene. Tap chases Zepp into the sewers where the two fight over the detective's gun, resulting in Tap being fatally shot. Only able to hear the fighting and gunshots, Gordon assumes his wife and daughter have been killed. Distraught, he finally cuts off his own foot to free himself from his chains, and uses a gun on the dead body to shoot Adam. Zepp enters the bathroom to kill Gordon, but Adam, surviving his gunshot, manages to kill Zepp. The freed Gordon then crawls out of the bathroom, promising to send help to rescue Adam. As Adam desperately searches Zepp's body for a key to his chains, he discovers that Zepp is actually just another of Jigsaw's victims, forced to do the killer's bidding in order to receive an antidote to a poison that was slowly killing him. And that's when the dead body in the middle of the room stands up, revealing himself to be the true Jigsaw killer. The man's name is John Kramer, a terminally ill patient of Dr. Gordon. John exits the bathroom and locks Adam inside, leaving him to die. In Saw 2, police detectives Matthews, Carey, and Rigg find and apprehend John Kramer, who reveals that he has trapped eight people inside a house for his next elaborate game. From video monitors, Matthews discovers that the eight strangers include Xavier, Jonas, Laura, Addison, Obi, Gus, former Jigsaw survivor Amanda, and Matthews' teenage son Daniel. John explains that the house is filled with gas that would kill all of the trapped captives within two hours. Kramer promises that Matthews will see Daniel again if he plays along in a game of his own, which involves simply having a calm conversation until the two hours are up. Matthews agrees to participate in a secret attempt to stall for time, while Carrie and Rig trace the video feed to find the captive's location. While interrogating Kramer, the Jigsaw Killer reveals that he is dying of cancer, and after having found a new appreciation for life, has become Jigsaw in an attempt to teach his victims not to take life for granted. Kramer also reveals that he knows Matthews is a corrupt cop, with a history of planting evidence and shooting unarmed suspects. And now, as part of John's elaborate game for Matthews, his teenage son Daniel is trapped inside a house filled with Matthews' wrongfully convicted arrests. Inside the house, the eight strangers learn of their imminent death by poison, but are told that antidotes have been hidden throughout the house. The strangers are killed one by one via various traps until only Xavier, Amanda, and Daniel remain. To retrieve the combination to a safe containing the antidote, Xavier attacks Amanda and Daniel, forcing Daniel to murder Xavier with a hacksaw. 
After only seeing Xavier attack Daniel on the video feed, and unaware of his son's survival, Matthews attacks John and demands to be taken to the house. As Kramer leads Matthews away, Carrie and Rig realize that the video feed isn't live, and that the game had actually taken place days prior. As the two hours expire, Daniel is revealed to be alive and well, hidden in the very room Matthews had just been interrogating John Kramer in. Unaware of this revelation, Matthews is led to the supposed house and enters alone, finding the bathroom Gordon and Adam were previously trapped in, where he is subdued and chained to a pipe on the wall. Amanda then arrives, revealing herself to be an acolyte of John Kramer, who intends to continue the Jigsaw legacy after his death. And now Detective Matthews is her first victim, locking him inside the bathroom and leaving him to die. In Saw 3, six months have passed, and Detective Rig and Carrie discover a dead body in a new jigsaw trap. Though they realize that this game was unwinnable, and the victim had zero chance of ever surviving, going against Jigsaw's usual code. Carrie is then abducted and placed in a trap of her own, which kills her after she realizes it is inescapable. Meanwhile, Dr. Lynn Dinlin is abducted by Amanda and taken to the now bedridden John Kramer. Amanda places a collar around Lynn's neck that would shoot her with shotgun shells if John Kramer dies. Lynn's game is to keep John alive until a another victim completes their own game. That other victim is Jeff, who awakens in an abandoned meatpacking plant and must complete a series of trials involving people connected to the death of his young son Dylan in a drunk driving accident. Meanwhile, John Kramer's health deteriorates, forcing Lynn to perform emergency life-saving surgery. After successfully completing the surgery, John agrees to have Amanda remove the deadly collar from Lynn. But Amanda refuses, jealous of John's seeming closeness to Lynn. Amanda reveals that she no longer believed in giving their victims a chance to save themselves, and had begun rigging traps to be unbeatable. Amanda then shoots Lynn just as Jeff arrives. Jeff, revealed to be Lynn's husband, then enacts his revenge by shooting Amanda. As Amanda dies, John reveals that this had also been a test for her, knowing she was wrongfully rigging the traps and believing she didn't deserve to continue his legacy. John then gives Jeff one final test, forgiving or killing him. An enraged Jeff murders John, inadvertently leading to the collar around his wife's neck to kill her. The room is then sealed shut, and and as John dies, he reveals that Jeff's daughter Corbett has also been captured, and Jeff's test must now continue. In Saw 4, another set of victims face one of Jigsaw's traps, resulting in the lawyer Art surviving. Officer Rig and Detective Mark Hoffman then discover the body of their old colleague, Carrie. Rig has been depressed and obsessive ever since the disappearance of his colleague, Detective Matthews, and the death of Carrie further devastates him. Detective Hoffman then meets FBI agents Strom and Perez, who theorize that Carrie's trap couldn't have been set up by Amanda alone, and thus Jigsaw must have had a another apprentice. Rig and Hoffman are then both kidnapped, with Rig being placed in a game of his own, with 90 minutes to complete a series of trials to escape death. Rig is also told that Detective Matthews is in fact still alive, and Rig's fate in the game is directly tied to his obsession with finding Matthews. Rig fails in saving all of Jigsaw's victims except for a woman named Morgan, then leaves her behind while he follows clues to his final test where he is promised to not only find the kidnapped Hoffman, but the long-missing and presumed dead Detective Matthews. Meanwhile, Strom and Perez begin following clues of their own to find and save Rig and Hoffman. Following the clues, they head to the school, where they find and save Morgan's life, and discover that all of the victims during Rig's game were criminals previously represented by the lawyer Art. Perez then discovers a Billy doll, which warns her that Strom will soon take the life of an innocent man, before exploding and killing her. Distraught over his partner's death, Strom aggressively interrogates Jill Tuck, the ex-wife of John Kramer. Jill explains that she and John had been expecting a baby boy Gideon, but Jill miscarried after one of her patients at a rehabilitation clinic attacked her. The miscarriage drove John and Jill apart, leading to their divorce. 
And after John's cancer diagnosis and new appreciation for life, he made the rehab patient his first victim as Jigsaw. With this information, Strom realizes that the final trial in Riggs game will occur at the Gideon meatpacking plant. At the abandoned plant, Matthews and Hoffman are trapped on opposite sides of a seesaw, with their fates directly tied to the other's survival. Art is forced to oversee the trap, stuck in a trap of his own that would kill him if he disobeys. When Riggs 90 minutes are up, Art will be allowed to release all of the victims from Jigsaw's game. But if Rig enters the room, Matthews will be crushed by ice blocks. Unaware of this trap, the obsessive Rig attempts to enter the room to save his colleagues. In an effort to stop Rig, Matthews shoots him in the chest. Rig survives the shot and enters the room, resulting in Matthews' death. Assuming Art is responsible, Rig mistakenly shoots and kills him. Hoffman then releases himself from the electric chair and reveals himself to be Jigsaw's other apprentice, leaving Rig to die of his gunshot wound. Meanwhile, Strom reaches the plant in his attempt to save Rig. Inside, he finds the room in which John Kramer, Amanda, and Lynn had all died. Jeff then appears and holds Strom at gunpoint, desperately searching for his daughter Corbett. Strom is forced to kill Jeff in self-defense, but before he can escape, Hoffman seals him inside and leaves him to die. In Saw 5, Hoffman leaves the warehouse with an alive and well Corbett, telling the police they are the only survivors of Jigsaw's latest game. Meanwhile, Strom is placed in a trap that sees his head trapped in a glass box quickly being filled with water that will drown him. Strom survives the trap by giving himself a tracheotomy, and is then rescued by the police. Hoffman is shocked by Strom's survival, but fortunately for John Kramer's apprentice, Strom is unaware of the corrupt detective's villainy. Hoffman is lauded as closing the Jigsaw case and given a promotion, while Strom is put on medical leave by his boss, Agent Dan Erickson, and upon learning Perez's final words were Detective Hoffman, he begins looking into the supposed hero. Meanwhile, a new game begins in an underground sewer, as strangers Ashley Britt, Charles Luba, and Malik discover they are Jigsaw's latest victims. Throughout their games, the group constantly sabotages each other in the hopes of being the final victim standing. In the end, Britt and Malik are the final pair remaining, and realize that their key to survival was to help and rely on the others. Britt and Malik call a truce as they work together on the final game. Meanwhile, Strom's investigation of Hoffman leads him to discovering the Jigsaw Apprentice's origins. Years prior, after his sister was murdered, Detective Hoffman fell into alcoholism and had a mental breakdown. Seeking revenge, Hoffman set up his own Jigsaw-inspired trap to murder his sister's killer, a man named Seth Baxter. After learning of the copycat killer, John Kramer kidnapped Hoffman and offered him a choice, become Jigsaw's apprentice, or have evidence of his revenge given to the police. And so Hoffman chose loyalty to his new master, John Kramer. Back in the present, realizing that Strom has uncovered the truth, Hoffman begins to frame the FBI agent, successfully convincing Erickson that Strom was Jigsaw's second apprentice. Erickson's effort to catch Strom leads him to the sewer, where he finds and saves the bleeding out Brit and Malik. Meanwhile, Strom pursues Hoffman for a final confrontation. Strom finds Hoffman and an audio tape that the killer had left to explain the rules of Strom's final test. The tape urges Strom to enter a nearby box, but Strom, thinking it to be a trap, locks Hoffman inside the box instead. The box is then lowered into the floor as Strom hears the final part of the audio message, explaining that if if he didn't enter the box, he would die and be framed as Jigsaw's apprentice. As the film comes to a close, Strom is crushed to death, fulfilling Hoffman's promise. In Saw 6, Hoffman exits the box and uses the deceased Strom's hand to plant fingerprints on a new Jigsaw game, further framing the dead FBI agent. Fellow FBI agent Dan Erickson investigates the latest game alongside Strom's former partner, Agent Perez, whose supposed death was actually a cover-up by Erickson in an effort to protect her from Jigsaw. Erickson and Perez discover that the knife used to plant clues in the body of the latest victim is the same knife used on Seth Baxter. 
Master, prompting them to reopen the case on Jigsaw's apprentice and grow closer to uncovering the truth about Detective Hoffman. Meanwhile, Hoffman visits John Kramer's ex-wife Jill to retrieve files on Jigsaw's final planned victims. William Eastman is an executive at a health insurance company that callously declined their client's coverage for vital medical treatment. Throughout William's various games, he is forced to sacrifice his own body and health in an effort to save his partners and employees that helped enable his shady business. After analyzing the instructional tapes found at Seth Baxter's deadly trap, Erickson and Perez realize that Hoffman is Jigsaw's true apprentice. His villainy uncovered, Hoffman murders Erickson and Perez, and once again plants Strom's fingerprints on the crime scene, before setting the lab on fire and returning to observe the ending of William's game. In William's final game, he enters a room containing two cells, one which contains his sister Pamela, and the other which holds Tara and Brent, the wife and teenage son of a man named Harold, who died after William's company refused to pay for life-saving medical treatment. A recording of John Crane reveals that the final game is actually for Tara and Brent, giving them the choice to kill William or forgive him. Tara can't bring herself to kill William, but Brent can, pulling a lever that injects William with needles filled with acid. Meanwhile, Jill receives a copy of an old letter that reveals that the once drug-addicted Amanda had urged her boyfriend to rob a local clinic, resulting in him attacking Jill and causing her miscarriage. When Hoffman found out about Amanda's involvement in the death of John Kramer's unborn son, he blackmailed her into killing Dr. Lynn Dinlin, knowing that Jeff would then kill Amanda in an act of revenge, leaving Hoffman as the sole heir to Jigsaw's legacy. Learning this information, Jill attacks Hoffman and places his head in a bear trap, then reveals that John Kramer had actually named Hoffman as his final victim in his will. As the film comes to a close, Jill leaves Hoffman behind to die. Just before time runs out, Hoffman manages to escape his trap, ripping his face apart in the process. In Saw 7, aka Saw 3D, Hoffman continues setting up his deadly games while seeking a way to enact revenge on Jill. Meanwhile, Jill goes to internal affairs detective Matt Gibson and offers to gather incriminating evidence against Hoffman in exchange for immunity and protection for herself. As Gibson investigates the scene of another deadly trap, which involved a group of white supremacists, the detective receives a message from Hoffman, offering to stop the jigsaw killings in exchange for Gibson giving him Jill. Gibson refuses this offer and places Jill in the police station to be under constant protection. And so Hoffman moves forward with his next game, involving a man named Bobby Dagan, who gained fame and fortune for claiming to be a jigsaw survivor, when in fact he is a fraud. Bobby is given one hour to complete a series of games, all involving members of his team who have enabled his lies, or else his wife Joyce will die. Despite his best efforts, Bobby fails at saving his companions. Finally, Bobby reaches his wife, who is chained and facing imminent death. The only way to save her is for Bobby to complete the jigsaw game he has already claimed to have won. Unfortunately, when faced with actually completing the trap, Bobby fails and his wife is killed. Meanwhile, Gibson sends a SWAT team to rescue Bobby, but they are lured into a trap where they are all killed by a poisonous gas. Gibson then discovers Hoffman's secret lair and realizes that Hoffman had hidden as one of the game's victims to sneak into the police station through the morgue. Before Gibson can warn anyone of Hoffman's ruse, he is killed by a pre-installed sentry gun. Inside the police station, Hoffman murders everyone in his path as he makes his way to Jill. He forces John Kramer's ex-wife into the same reverse bear trap that he and Amanda had previously escaped but this time ensures that the device kills its victim. As Hoffman prepares to flee town, he is abducted by three masked figures, who reveal themselves to be new apprentices of Jigsaw, led by none other than Dr. Lawrence Gordon. Gordon reveals that he was recruited by John Kramer after escaping his trap, and is targeting Hoffman as revenge for killing Jill. Hoffman is locked inside the same bathroom that Gordon escaped from, but the doctor throws away the hacksaw, leaving Hoffman to die with no means to escape. In the movie Jigsaw, a few years have passed, but detectives Brad Halloran and Keith Hunt confront a man named Edgar Munson, who warns them that a new Jigsaw killer has emerged, and that five new victims are in danger. Forced into his own game, Edgar attempts to use a remote, causing the police to gun him down. 
Elsewhere, five people wake up inside a barn and realize that they are Jigsaw's newest victims. Mitch, Anna, Ryan, and Carly all escape the first trap, while the fifth victim wakes up too late and is pulled to his death. Carly and Mitch are killed in their own respective traps, leaving Anna and Ryan as the last survivors in the final game. Meanwhile, Halloran and Hunt begin discovering the bodies of the victims from Jigsaw's game. Halloran soon suspects that the new killer is actually the coroner, Logan Nelson, and his assistant, Jigsaw fangirl, Eleanor. Logan's wife had been murdered two years prior, which Halloran believes fits the desire for revenge of Jigsaw's previous accomplices. Hunt secretly follows Logan and Eleanor to the assistant coroner's studio, where she has hand-built exact replicas of Jigsaw's previous traps. As Hunt arrests the pair, Logan convinces the detective that Halloran is the true killer. Hunt allows Logan and Eleanor to prove their innocence and gather the evidence needed to bring down Halloran. Eleanor discovers that the latest victim died on a farm, which she and Logan realize must be the farm previously owned by Jill. As the duo race to the farm to save the remaining victims, Halloran continues to pursue them. Back at the farm, Anna and Ryan are confronted by their attacker and placed into their final game. The attacker reveals himself to be none other than John Kramer, meaning the events at the farm secretly happened over a decade ago. John tells them the keys to their freedom are hidden within a shotgun, which Anna uses to shoot Ryan. But the gun backfires, killing Anna, and Ryan realizes that the key was literally hidden within a shotgun shell, which is now destroyed. With with no other way out, Ryan bleeds out from his leg wound. Back in the present, Halloran confronts Logan and Eleanor at the farm. While Eleanor manages to escape, Halloran and Logan are subdued by an unknown figure and placed into traps of their own. With collars strapped around their necks, Logan and Halloran are forced to confess to their sins or else high-powered lasers would slice open their heads. Logan admits to previously being a hospital resident who mislabeled John Kramer's x-rays, resulting in his terminal brain tumor being discovered too late. Despite this confession, Logan is killed by his trap. Halloran then confesses to being a dirty cop, accepting bribes to allow criminals to escape punishment. Logan then reveals that he faked his own death and is in fact Jigsaw's accomplice. Logan was the unconscious man from the first barn trap, but John spared his life after realizing the X-ray mix-up was an honest mistake. Logan became John's first accomplice and years later, after his wife's murder, began seeking revenge against Halloran for helping her murderer Edgar Munson get away. Logan began seeking out criminals, Halloran helped avoid arrest and forced them to play the same deadly games that were played in the barn a decade prior, then placed their bodies to be found by Halloran and Hunt. As Halloran begs for forgiveness and mercy, Logan activates the trap killing Halloran instantly. In Spiral, the much maligned detective Zeke Banks and his new rookie partner William Shank begin investigating the death of a fellow detective in what appears to be a trap from a new Jigsaw killer. As the duo continue their investigation, another detective, who has a past rivalry with Zeke, is placed in a trap of his own. When he fails to escape and his body is discovered, some of Zeke's fellow detectives begin to suspect him as the new killer. Next, the Jigsaw copycat identifying themselves as the Spiral Killer, leads the detectives to a butcher shop where they find another victim. When that victim is identified as Shank, Zeke becomes distraught and even more determined to catch the killer. Shortly after, Captain Angie Garza is placed in a trap in the police department. Zeke discovers Garza moments too late, and the captain becomes the Spiral Killer's latest victim. Zeke then discovers his old partner Peter Dunleavy, chained up in a trap of his own. Dunleavy was arrested after Zeke exposed him as a murderer, leading Zeke to be labeled as a snitch by his fellow detectives. Now, Zeke is given the choice to save Dunleavy or leave him to die. Despite his best efforts, Zeke fails in saving Dunleavy, resulting in the crooked cop's death. Next, Zeke finds an alive and well William Shank, who reveals himself to be the spiral killer. Shank reveals that his father had been the man that Dunleavy murdered after he agreed to testify against another dirty cop. Shank spent his entire life planning his revenge against the corrupt police force, and he believes Zeke could make for a worthy accomplice. In Zeke's final test, Shank reveals that he has placed his father, Marcus Banks, in a trap of his own. Marcus is the former police chief who protected 
and enabled his corrupt officers in an effort to better clean up the streets. Marcus is now suspended like a marionette puppet, with his blood being drained. Shank calls the police and warns them that he is being pursued by a man with a gun, then gives Zeke a choice to shoot a target that would release his father or shoot and kill Shank. Zeke chooses to save his father, then attacks his former partner. As a SWAT team arrives, they inadvertently set off a tripwire that suspends Marcus like a puppet once again, with a gun planted on his arm. The SWAT team opens fire on Marcus, killing him, while Shink escapes, leaving Zeke to cry out in defeat.